We have folks still sliding in. We want to welcome anybody that is joining us online, whether you're joining us from uh, Georgia or Tennessee, or maybe you're joining us from here in Murfreesboro, or perhaps Mexico, or somewhere else. Um, we'd love for you to reach out to us, find a way to comment somehow, and let us know where you're tuning in from. We're glad to, uh, to have you here. And everybody in the room, we're glad that you are here as, uh, as well. Okay. All right, sorry. Taking care of business up here. Hey, let's do this. If you've got a cell phone, if you wouldn't mind. There we go. If you wouldn't mind uh, to uh, silence that phone so it's not a distraction, that would be fabulous. And then, guys, if you, guys and girls, anybody, if you have one of the drinks from True North, if you've got a drink or a drink that's not covered, please make sure you pick that up and hold it. Otherwise, it will spill when we all stand up in a minute, and you don't want to clean that up, and we don't want to help you clean it up. So let's uh, make sure all the drinks are put away. If you got it, say got it. Got it. All right. Now, people are just now getting seated. And so we, it feels weird to do a four-minute party right after you get seated. But now that we're all in one place, we want to acknowledge there's people in this room that you haven't met or seen or um, run into in a while, and we want to have what we call a four-minute party. So in just a second, Blake, tell us what we're all going to do and what they can do while we do that. All right, we're all going to get up, we're going to stand up, we're going to roam around, we're going to talk to as many people as we can and uh, meet some people you don't know. If you see a face that you don't know or you forgot their name, make sure to talk to them. And if you're a guest, come up here. We've got a Baskin Robbins gift card for you and some information for you to fill out. Um, so we want to meet you as well as our students want to meet you just as much. Our student greeters, come on up. If you're one of our student greeters, come on up here so that we can uh, assist you. You can assist them in getting the uh, gift card. And guys, again, if it's your first time here and you're a guest and you're a teen, all you got to do during the four-minute party is come find them, and they will give you a Baskin-Robbins gift card. But we want everybody to feel welcome. So please, please look around you. Please look around you and find somebody that you don't know and make sure they feel welcome because if you come in here and we don't speak to you, then um, we, we've really failed. So let's don't do that, okay? Uh, I think we're ready. Everybody, remember, you have a simple assignment. Find somebody to say hi to. Let's all stand up and let's have a four-minute party. Let's go. Hi. What's, what's up? How are you doing? How, how, how's your day going? What's, uh, what's popping? What's up? Um, I, ju I just want to thank you. For, uh, you know, you know, coming here tonight, spend some time with us in the Lord and whatnot. It's gonna be a good time. It's gonna be a wild time. Um, uh, I just want you to know that you are looking fantastic tonight. And Garrison, if you were watching this, you look downright marvelous. All right, bye. Woo! Good job. Good crowd tonight. Good crowd tonight. All right, if you are an eighth grade guy. If you're an eighth grade guy, would you do me a favor right now and would you stand up? An eighth grade guy. He, wow, holy moly. This is my Sunday morning class, half of that it. That is a lot of eighth grade guys. All right. Put your hey, hand down. Eighth grade famous. guys, listen carefully. <laughs> After we are done tonight, uh, Knox and Tanner, Knox Ross or Tanner Nance need to meet with the eighth grade guys in this 10th grade classroom, okay? You guys are going to go back there uh, after True North. I will probably forget to remind you. I'm going to leave this up here, but I'll probably forget. But eighth grade guys, if you got it, say got it. Got it. it won't take long. It won't take long at all. They just think they've got an opportunity they want to present to you all, and you all need to meet there. You guys can have a seat. Eighth grade guys, thank you very much. Good job. We also want to, where'd Katie go? Katie, where'd Katie, where'd Katie, there, Katie right here. So some of you know Katie Wentz. Katie, um, let me know during the four-minute party that she was uh, in, a, uh, in a, a pretty serious car accident recently and totaled her car and had some, some, some injuries that you're recovering from, and she is okay, and we are, uh, we're thankful for that. And she's asked, to, to ask, asked us to keep her in, her pray, in our prayers. I'll get the sentence out in just a minute. So let's, let's do that. Also, I have another prayer request. Miss Sharon, who normally prays in here, 
She is not feeling well tonight, and she couldn't make it, but she said, I took the prayer request, I wrote them out by hand in a notebook that she keeps at home, and she says, I'm praying for them all at home, but I would love for two or three girls to, or maybe four or five, or guys, I don't care, anybody, to go in this room during our first song and just say a prayer for Miss Sharon, and I would love for somebody to get a picture of either you all praying or you all just you know, given an I love you to Miss Sharon or whatever, and text that to me, if one person would text it to me, and I'll send it to Miss Sharon, that would be awesome. We want to acknowledge the work that she does in there, okay? So if we have a few people during the first song that will go in there and pray, that would be great. And the rest of us, we can also pray for Katie. I think I got all that. Is that good? Yeah. Everybody got it? Let's move on with some other things that we have going on, and we have a lot to do tonight, and some brand new segments that we're uh, excited about. A little yeah. nervous. <laughs> But Not it is one. time for our birthdays in the, the borough. borough. Anybody that's got a birthday, April 23rd to the 29th, come on up. Let's go. Come on up. We got one. We got two. All right. Two birthdays. Two birthdays. Very good. Very good. Can I steal one of those, Blake? I'm going to steal one of those. Okay. Very good. Got someone I'll give that to later on. All right, we have two birthdays, and we're going to give you a chance to win. Give you a chance to win something. Come on up, Zeb. All right. Now, you all know how this works. In just a minute, we're going to, uh, after we've given you your Abraham Lincoln uh, sticker, which I always forget to show that slide, we have a uh, slide we're going to show. Zeb, you have a word. You guys, would you lower your eyes, lower your heads, close your eyes so you can't see. Here's the word that Zeb is going to try to do. This is the word or phrase that Zeb's going to try to do. We've now taken it off the screen. You guys can look back up. Zeb, you have 30 seconds to convey that phrase to them, and your 30 seconds start for, for these uh, Sour Patch Kids. Yeah. They start right now. They were so close, and he took them way off. Birthday. Oh, he got it right. He got it right. We got him. There you go. Let's there go you go. injure him again. <laughs> I was afraid he was going to. Yeah, go grab one. Did you get one? Yeah, that's yours. Good job. All right. Congratulations. Nice job, Zeb. Way to go, Zeb. Good job. Oh, we're, oh, we're going to sing. Sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm all thrown off tonight. Zeb got it right. Everything is going wrong tonight. So there we go. We're going to sing to them the way we do it in the NBYG is with three simple words. And those words are, you're still cool. And it goes like this. Come on. You're still cool. Here we go. You've still got it. It's plain to see. You're still cool. Yeah, it's your birthday today. Or March. Why we're here to say that you're still cool. Everybody say happy birthday. happy birthday. All right, you guys can have a seat. Okay, ladies, tomorrow afternoon, all the NBYG girls. Courtney, y'all will be there tomorrow? Okay. Peyton may not be there tomorrow, just so you know. She might not be there. She's a little under the weather today, and we have another task. We've got to get finished up, so she may not be there tomorrow. But you guys go and uh, join Courtney tomorrow, Panera Bread. And also, Courtney, come on up here really quickly, and let's talk about what's happening on Saturday night. You're the official hype person for the, uh, y'all the hype squad for the girls' night. Okay. All right. So we talked about it last week. Yeah. But let's give us some details again. This Saturday night, April 29th, what's going on? This Saturday from 4 to 8 right here, we're going to be doing some fun service projects, and then we're going to end the night with dinner and a movie, and it's going to be really fun. And I want you all to come because we have a lot to do. <laughs> And it's a great way to get to know other girls. Yes. And you went and purchased supplies the other day yeah. with some girls. So you're all set up for it and have several service projects. So that's going to be awesome. Yes. We're excited. Girls, also, I threw this slide in here. I threw this slide in here. Girls, you need to know that uh, while all four of our interns are on their way, one, only one of them sent me a picture that she is on the way for the summer. The NBYG, uh, Julia, Julia Jenkins sent us this picture from Peru. So there she is. She is on the way. Pretty impressive, pretty awesome. So, girls, we'll see you all. Uh, we won't, but she will. Uh, see some of you on Saturday night. A big hand for Courtney. Thanks, Courtney. Okay, 
Several of you last week said, I want to be a part of the team that's going to do this um, service project for some service points or service hours. I had four or five names. This is last call, and we really need probably two to three more people. We'll coordinate a time when everybody can be there. These are all the names of, on the wall that the church uh, put of people they are praying for. We need about six people to come and take all of these names off the wall and then to read them and type them onto one list and then to fold them back up and put them back in the wall, not exactly where they were, of course, but to put them back in the wall so the wall still looks like it does because David's going to keep referring to that and people are going to be praying for those, but we want to have those names recorded. I have four teens who have put down that they'd like to help with that. If you are interested, would you please either shoot me a text now or see me afterwards and say, I'd like to be a part of that. We'll do our best to coordinate a time when you all can be there. If not, the four of you that volunteered are going to have your work cut out for you to, uh, to do that. So if you're looking for service points or service hours, help us out with that. If you got it, say got it. Got it. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, real quick word about Kids Camp 2023. <laughs> All right, there we go. Uh, so we have got a, um, we still have a waiting list, and we're still trying to work through that, and uh, we're, we're, working, we're working diligently, but here's what this means. Many of you that are uh, high schoolers, in order to allow some of these folks to go, we're going to need a few more high schoolers to agree to, uh, to be willing to tent camp, because our 7th and 8th and ninth grade girls are going to need to primarily be in the uh, cabins. We have two cabins for girls, 7th, 8th, and ninth grade girls. If some of the ninth grade girls are willing to tent camp, that will allow us to have some of you 10th, 11th, and 12th graders that really want to be in a cabin to do that. But we basically need every high school student to tent camp. Uh, yes, that's pretty but, much. But if, if a ninth... But it's going to be fun. It's gonna, yeah. like, that's going to be the best camp ever when every high schooler is tent camping, yeah? So we're going to be calling some of you this week or next week, so you just need to know we're going to really need, in order to get room for people to go, that's what we're going to need. Okay? Or go out there and build two cabins by May 15th. That'd work too. Yeah. That'd work too. Don donate a bunch of money, build it, get a septic tank set up, take care of it. I will say we're this, uh, Blake and I and Mike are going to be going up to camp. To build a cabin. <laughs> very soon to begin to film some scenes for, uh, thank you, to begin to build some scenes for our um, film, did I say build? Yeah. To film some scenes for our camp reveal video, which will be coming up. So uh, we're getting excited. We're getting really excited. It's going to be a lot of fun, but look forward to, uh, for that. Okay. Uh, we got to go could fast. Got to go fast. Got a lot of things going on. Um, impact is coming up. Hey. And Impact, we're going to be sending out a link soon. Yep. Th this is going to be confusing. I'll make it very fast. Listen carefully. You will have to fill out a form for North Boulevard. Shh, guys. You'll have to fill out a form for North Boulevard. And then when Lipscomb sends us their link, you will also have to fill out another registration document for them. So please, when your parents say, I already did this. No, you got to fill one out. I'm, I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. Lipscomb gets theirs. We don't have a way of getting theirs. You send that to them. We also have to have a record for it. I know it's difficult. Yeah, you'll, fill, for that you'll fill out three forms. That's all you need to know. Just That's count right. them down when you fill them out. Three, okay. Two, one. Uh, all right, let's move on. We got, I want to have some fun here. And so let's bring up, let's bring up Carson Tracy. Come on up, Carson. Carson's coming up. It's time for VBS Jams with Carson Tracy. Carson, you've got a VBS song. Oh, you need your hands for this. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Carson, is this the one you did not do last week? No. Oh. It's a different one. Oh, wow. You, you, you shocked me. Turn the tables. How's Tell it, us about it. What, what song are we going to hear? Uh, so um, there's a verse at the end of this song that it's, I guess, since you're a new grandfather and Daisy oh. and Elijah are new parents. Oh, okay. You, it's, it's you spoiled so the picks of the week. Way to go. Keep going. No, that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> it's, it's okay. It's exciting. It's called Squiggly. It's called Squiggly. Yes. Okay. All right. Very good. Okay. Put your hands together, people. Okay. This is the VBS song? This is a VBS song. Okay. And clap. I got nervous. So I, I don't think I know this. Now you just got to... All right. So all right. It starts. 
Squiggly little caterpillar climbing up a tree. <laughs> he wiggles long, he wiggles short, he wiggles right at me. Put him in a box. Don't go away, I said. But when I open up the box, a butterfly instead. I could never make one, not even if I try. But only God in heaven can make the butterfly. Squiggly little tadpoles Ooh. swimming in the lake. He wiggles long, he wiggles short, he wiggles like a snake. Put him in a jar. Don't go away, I said. But when I open up the jar, jumping frog instead. I could never make one, not even if I try. The jumping frog was made by God just like the butterfly. Squiggly little Mary May crawling across the floor. She wiggles long, she wiggles short, she wiggles towards the door. Put her in her crib. Oh, good. Don't go away, I said. <laughs> but when I open up the door, she's on the floor instead. What? I could never make her, oh. not even if I try. <laughs> but only God in heaven can make our cutie pie. Oh! Hey! Hey, that was nice! <laughs> That's great! I, I, <laughs> I, thought, I thought we were going to put her in a box. I was a little very, I was very nervous. <laughs> I was very nervous about that. That's a good job. Thank you. Okay, it is time for uh, Picks of the Week. <laughs> picks of the Week. Here we go. Our first one is another edition of... No. Nope. 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 Very good. Hey, would you go turn the lights off in that room and shut the door, please? Nope. One of you do that. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, nope. All right. Uh, here we go. Yeah. I, this, wow. I just saw this. You tell me yes or no. Uh, North Carolina restaurant serves up tarantula burger for exotic meat month. Anybody willing to try a tarantula burger? Nope. I would. However, it's, it's not meat. Do what? It's not meat. Unless they're like a tarantula. I, well, a tarantula is, it, is meat. No, it's not. It's an insect. But a tarantula is got, got – well, okay, maybe it doesn't have I, – I don't know. I don't think So you're it saying does. it's not a mammal. Well, I definitely know it's All not I'm a mammal. All I'm doing is singing in my head, I know an old lady who swallowed <laughs> a tarantula burger. No, it's not a mammal. It wriggled and wriggled and tickled inside her. And I don't know why she ate the tarantula burger. All right, um, that's a good <laughs> question. I don't know what that is, but there you go. Here we go. Let's find out what makes DJ Mike laugh. Scott! Brother, help me! It's timed out perfectly, by the way. Long live the king. <laughs> that was actually timed out pretty well. Um, pretty well. All right, so that's what makes, uh, that's what makes DJ Mike laugh. All right, we have a new segment. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. I think we're okay. I'm a little nervous about this segment, but we're going to try it. Uh, it's, a, it's a segment that we're, we may do it. This may be the only time we do it. You may be the first and last people to see this. It's called Watch Me, Watch This. Watch Me, Watch This. All right. Now, Blake, here's how this works. We've got to find um, a girl and two guys that are going to watch a video, and we're going to watch them watch it. Okay, so you want to get um, you want to get the two guys. Uh, no, I would let's get uh, let's get two two guys and uh, let's get we need a, a a lady that can come up here and uh, and and watch this. Uh, let me let me see. I, I need I, I need he's got the guys. I need to see. Uh, let's get. Um, my, my, Molly, come on up here. No offense to anybody else, but Molly, come on up here. And we got some guys here. Now, unfortunately, you're going to watch them watch this. Uh, let's bring the phone up here. We'll start with one of our guys. Okay. Let's get guy, girl, guy. So you all just stand right over here. Can, we, can the camera still see them okay? All right, bring me this video. Oh, we have, oh, we have it on an iPad. Okay. All right, you ready? Now, you all are going to go stand over there. Okay, we're just going to start with you. Okay, are you ready? Okay, hold on. Oh, okay, here we go. You ready to watch this? Okay. All right, Parker. Okay. Everybody just watch. We're just going to watch him watch this. Ha <laughs> 
Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Now we watched him. Now how do we go back here? Just hit. Okay. Oh, oh, no. no. We don't do that. All right. Now, okay. That was good. I was, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Now we're going to watch, watch Miley watch it. Let's just watch Miley watch this. Okay. And uh, here we go. Just watch it. Don't, don't say anything. Okay, all right, we, we just watched Miley watch it. Okay, I'm going to go this way here. Oh, I did it again. Now we're going to watch David watch it. Come up here, Dave. Come on up here, Dave. And then, um, oh, okay, thank you, sorry. All right, and uh, Daniel Jones, Daniel, would you come up here a second, please? Come on up, Daniel. Come on up, Daniel. You won't have, you won't have to say anything. So no, you're you don't say anything. All right, but, don't, but just don't, don't watch it yet. We're going to watch David watch this. Here we go, Dave. Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay all right now daniel daniel come on up here i don't want to mess this up again i'm afraid i'm going to though but it's okay Ooh, look at there hey there you go all right daniel now we're just going to watch you watch this okay okay, okay here we go here we go i got a good feeling about this Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, would you all like to watch what they just watched? Yeah. Well, too bad. No, I'm kidding. All right, we're going to watch it. Um, now I get to watch you watch this. Yeah. Now we're going to watch you watch it. Here, here's what they just watched uh, right here. When you're spending every day on your own, and here it goes. I'm just a kid, and a life is a nightmare. I'm just a kid, I know that it's not fair. Nobody cares He's okay. He's okay. He's all right. Wow. All right. We may never, we may never show that segment again, but he's all right. All right. We're going to move on. That was Watch Me Watch This. Featuring what videos that make DJ Mike laugh. Yes. Yes. All right. But now, now it's time, guys, for something that is a pretty big deal. I thought, it, I thought it was about to happen. All right. Never well, was. as some of you have predicted, and I just certainly couldn't get away with it, indulge me for just a minute. There's only four pictures, everybody. Um, but I'm proud to announce the arrival of our very first grandchild, Mary Mae Montgomery. There she is. There she is. Uh, pictured up there. And uh, here she is. There she is. And some of you said, how soon before we get her first happy face? Uh, and it was actually at about... Uh, one o'clock today. One o'clock today. Here's the best she can do. That's the best she can do. But there it is. Uh, that's it. And um, she is home. I, I just found out they went home. Uh, and I don't know about you guys, but at least in our family, that is a pretty big deal. All right. That was really good. Okay, guys. We're going to try this one more time. We've got to go quick. We're going to do the... Oh, he's not here, is he? Who? Is Luke here? Is he here? Luke? No. He's not here. No. Oh. Should we wait? Nah. We'll still do it. All right, we're going to try it. Our middle school version <laughs> of the game we tried last week called Suffixiation. We need two seventh grade boys, two seventh grade girls, two eighth grade boys, two eighth grade. Hey, Blake, you find the seventh grade. I'll handle the eighth grade. I need two eighth grade girls. Two eighth grade girls. One, come on up. I need another eighth grade girl. You want to try it? Melanie? Oh, you're not eighth grade. I need an eighth grade girl. Eighth grade girl. Is there another eighth grade girl in the room? 
Eighth grade girl. Eighth grade girl. Come on up, Heidi. Now we need two. Oh, you got all the boys? Okay, so now I need two seventh grade girls. Two seventh grade girls. Come on up. We got one. Uh, let, okay, Melanie, you going? Come on up. We've you got pictures before. Let's let Melanie come up there. We'll get you. We'll get you again next time we play it. Come on up. Now let's go, boy, girl, boy, girl. Let's line up, boy, girl, boy, girl. I know that freaks middle schoolers out, but let's do it. Boy, girl, boy, girl. This is not a middle school dance where we're gonna have one side of the room. So there we go. Okay, you're doing good. Yeah, Jansen, right in there. Wait, one, two, three. Four. Okay, now Jack, come right here in the middle. There we go. Now guys, all slide down. Slide down. How many of you were here last week and saw this game last week? Yes. It's a game in itself trying to get middle schoolers to line up boy, girl, boy, girl. How many of you, keep going, we're going to center ourselves. How many of you were here and saw this last week? How many of you did not see it last week? Okay, well, this could be fun. Jansen, for your sake and the review of everybody else, we're going to show you a suffix, a way of ending a word. For example, uh, T-I-O-N. That was one last week. We're not doing that again. You're going to each have a turn at saying a word that ends in those letters that, that, that is a suffix, okay? And we'll be the judge. And if you can't think of one, you just step back. And then it, you keep coming together until and, there's one person left. And pass the mic. And you pass the mic down, and you've got to talk into the microphone and talk loudly, okay? Loudly. So, all right, you've got to speak into the mic. Tricked you. And so, guys, we got to go quick. we got to go quick. We're on a time clock here. So here is your first suffix. She'll give you about two seconds each time. And if you can't think of one, you're going to have to step back. All right, guys. Your first suffix is going to be less, L-E-S-S, -S, a word that ends in less. If you say a word that's already been said, you're out. So be listening. Thoughtless. Thoughtless. Let's go. Useless. Useless. Helpless. Meaningless. Meaningless. Ooh. Painless. Ooh. Worthless. Worthless. Oh, he's oh. out. Joyless. <laughs> Joyless. Good. Now, back up to the front. Here we go. Keep going, guys. Shh, shh, keep going. Keep going. He's out. He's out. Fearless. Fearless. Changeless. Changeless. He's out. Worryless. Worryless. Wordless. Worryless. Wor worryless. <laughs> is is worryless a word? I don't think worryless is a word. You're out. Sleepless. I, sleepless. Very good. Three left. Get go. Shh. Was meaningless that? No, it's her sister. Colorless. What? Colorless. Colorless. That's She's mean. out. It has joyless, joyless been yeah. said? Yeah. Well, then you're out. Joyless. Okay, all right, you win. Tucker wins. All right, very good. Now, Tucker's got one point. Everybody back in. Everybody back in. All right, Blake, tell them what is their next suffix. Here comes, guys, your next suffix. O-U-S. O -U -S. We'll start down there. O-U-S. It's a little tougher. Spacious. Ooh. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Delicious. Ooh. You got it. Oh, she's out. She's out. No. Out. Oh. Conspicuous. Conspicuous. <laughs> He's out. All right, go back. Squeeze in together. Keep going. Unconspicuous. Uh, uh, un inconspicuous. We'll count it. Inconspicuous. We'll count it. We'll count it. Oh. Ooh, inconspicuous. Close. Okay. I don't know. Oh, all right. She wins. Heidi wins. All right, very good. All right. Well, we have two more. We have two more. Here we go. All right, we have now one point. Who won that round? Heidi won that round, and then Tucker won that round. All right, here we go. Your next one is going to be S-H-I-P, ship. Ship. We're going to start right there. You ready? Huh? Uh, we'll go that way. Ready? Spaceship. Spaceship. Is spaceship no. one no. or two? I think it's two words. I think it's two words. No, you're out. You're out. Friendship. Friendship. Relationship. Oh. Okay, you're out. Bring it up here. Go, Ryder. Get ready, guys. Pirate ship. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Ownership. Ownership. Worship? Worship? Uh, yeah, we'll count. Yes, worship. We'll count. I'm going to count it. We're going to count it. I don't know. Dealership? What? Dealership? Dealership. Yeah. yeah. Penmanship? No, 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 no. no. You, right here. Uh, I'm already out. Uh, well, back up. up. Okay, go. Uh, penmanship? Penmanship. Good. He's out. All right. She wins. Elizabeth wins. Back in, guys. Back in. All right. Now, everybody's, we got three winners so far. Let's see if somebody can take home. I don't know that, that worship might have been a, a free one there. That might not be a, quite the, the suffix, even though you were right. We're going to count it. 
Uh, yeah, pirate ship does not count. All right, you got one more. We'll see if somebody can get two points, okay? All right, here you go. Here comes your last one. Friendly. <laughs> <laughs> got it, go. All right. Fully. Sure. Unfriendly. Good. Um, <laughs> unfully? I don't know. No, you're out. <laughs> You're out. Lovely. Got it. Openly. Openly. Harshly. You got it. Back up here. Step up, guys. Step up and together. Keep going. Here we go. Go, go. Spacely. Spacely? No, no. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Strongly. Strongly. Joyfully. Joyfully. He's out. Lawfully. Thoughtfully. <laughs> Did you, what did you say? Thought, thoughtfully. Thoughtfully? Oh. Lawfully. Lawfully. Sorry, I'm yeah, sorry. sorry. Lawfully. Lightly. Okay. Thoughtfully. You took mine. Darkly. Darkly. That's why it's for. Sorry. It's a darkly lit room. You never know. Early. Yep. Lightly. Brightly. Pridely? Brightly. Oh, yeah. brightly. Brightly. Yes, brightly's there. Shh. Well, I was going to say pridely. Weekly. He's out. Yeah. She's out. All right, two more. Oh, you're you're right. you got one. They're, they're both still in. They're still in. Hopefully. Uh, have we said hopefully? No. Okay. Hopefully. Okay, good. We got it. Uh, happily. Ooh. Oh. Jolly. Ooh. Nah. All right, we have another winner. All right, Melody's our winner. Very good. Good job. Good job. All right, that's how you play suffixation. Give him a big hand, guys. They did a good job. Nice work, guys. Good job. Good job, Melody. Good job. Good job. Good job. Way to go. Way to go. Way to go. Good job. I think the best part of that game, the best part of that game was just watching Heidi's face. Heidi looked terrified the whole time. All right, let's uh, change gears for just a minute. Next week. Next week. Raise your hand if you can answer this question. How many of you know someone in your life who has been through something that makes you say, if they can endure that and still put their faith in God, then maybe I can get through what I'm going through. How many of you know somebody who's been through something pretty significant that has rocked their faith? A lot of us in the room, many of us. If you haven't, it's, it's on its way, probably. Um, Next week, we have the opportunity, and it's going to be a really great way as we begin to finish out True North for this school year. Um, we have a, a guest speaker who's going to be here from Lipscomb University, a member of the Lipscomb University um, Lady Bison soccer team. Sydney Jones is going to be in here. She's actually a friend of many of our students and former students. She'll be in this room next week live sharing a, a testimony that you're not only not going to want to miss but you're going to want to invite somebody to come with you that you think is going through something that is really difficult. You don't have to tell them that's why you've invited them, but, or you can, and say, hey, I'd love for you to join me. Uh, I don't know this speaker, you, you can say, but, but I've heard this is going to be a, um, this could be something that would be a blessing. And Sydney's going to share her testimony. She's going to be here next week, and I want you to show her the honor because it's going to be very courageous for her to share her story. But she'll be here next week. So if you can't be here in person, you can certainly tune in after the fact or t tune in live. But we'd love to have you here in person uh, next week for, to hear uh, Sydney Jones. Okay, we're about to transition into uh, a time of worship. We want some people to be praying in that room. We can't maybe have a hundred go in there, but several of you, maybe our older students, want to go in there and pray for Miss Sharon. If some of you want to gather and pray for uh, Katie up here at front, it'd be great to have some folks come and pray for her right up here. And then anybody else who wants to pray where you are, that's great. Um, but we're going to invite everyone to, uh, to stand up and let's worship together for a few songs. If you're helping us sing, come on and get in place. And um, let's uh, focus our thoughts on worship for the next few moments.
and have a seat. Well, once again, we want to welcome those that might be joining us tonight online and those who are joining us here in person. And um, you found a slip of paper in your chair when you got here tonight. Those of you in the back, I'm sorry you don't have those, but I'm going to give these maybe to uh, Russell. And Russell, I'm just going to let you pass one of these out to everybody back here. I'm going to toss them to you. Can I do that? If you just want to give one of those to everybody that wants one in the back of the room, um, I'd like you to hold on to it. Don't uh, resist the temptation to, you know, fiddle with it or hurt somebody with it or try to cut somebody with it, but just, would you just hold on to it? I just need you to Hold it in your hand. If you want to put it in your Bible, that's fine. If you need to put it, you know, in, in a pocket or something, that's fine. We just like it on your person. Um, all right, in just a minute, I'm going to ask for a couple of volunteers to help with something very significant. And um, I, I need the volunteers probably, it doesn't have to be somebody older. It can be somebody younger. But this is not going to be for your typical, you know, hilarious, fun illustration. It's going to be for something, you know, vulnerable. And we're not going to make you share deep, dark things. You're not going to have to confess anything. It's not going to embarrass anybody. But I do need to prepare two people now. I'd love for it to be a guy and a girl who are going through. Well, hold on. You need to find out what you're being prepared for. Who, is, uh, who are going through something a pretty significant mess or a significant test. You're not going to have to tell us, um, you know, all the details are all about it, but you are going to have to, to, we're going to have a a dialogue. So in just a minute, I need, uh, we'll get a guy and a girl that are going through something and it needs to be something that you feel like God is calling you to to take action on. Okay. So just be thinking about that. We're not going to get you yet. We're going to come to that later. But I do want to go quickly because we have a lot to do tonight. I've shown you this bumper sticker before that I drove upon here in town. Um, I actually came up on it and I saw it on a car in front of me. And my first thought, forgive me, but my first thought was, oh, you know, I'm probably behind somebody who does not believe in God or who is an atheist because of the way I read the bumper sticker. But you can read it two different ways. So the way, based on what I just told you, how did I read it when I pulled up behind this car? God is, God is nowhere. And I thought, you know, I just wish I could get out of the car and go up to that person and knock on their window and say, hey, what is it that has made you say God is nowhere? Not to fight them, not to say, let me prove it, let me debate you, but to just say, I'd love to hear what has made you say that God is nowhere. Now, let me be honest. For somebody in this room, maybe for somebody on every row in this room, 
And maybe for everybody, somebody in every seat of this room, at some point in your life, you have said, God is nowhere. And I don't know where he is. I can't hear him. I've never heard him. We've been talking about hearing God speak, and he's, and he's nowhere. Now, you're ahead of me on this. As I looked at it, I told somebody about it. I wrote it out, and I said, let me just show you. Look at this, look at this bumper sticker I saw. And they said, oh, man, I really needed that. I said, what do you mean? They're like, I needed that reminder. I bet that was very encouraging to you. And I said, I'm totally lost because I just didn't read it right. Based on the story I just told you, how did they read the bumper sticker? God is now here. God is now here. Not just God is or God was, but God is and, he's, and he is now. And he's not just now there, he's now here. And they were like, I bet that was so encouraging to you. All right, so I'm going to let that just rest on you for a second. As I'm going to share with you, just this past week, I signed up for something last minute. I've been seeing it on my Facebook feed over and over and over, and I thought, I don't have time to do that. But it was um, a part of David Platt's church. Many of you have read some books by David Platt, but he has a, an organization called Radical, and they put out a film series called Neighborhoods and Nations. Now, some of you may be familiar with Secret Church, David Platt's uh, annual event called Secret Church. Anybody in the room ever heard of the, the Secret Church? It is a, a, an, um, an event that happens every year, and they do a deep dive into Scripture. It's a six-hour, 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. in the morning. And you sign up, and you say, we're going to meet together, with the, whether it's three people in your house or your family or your youth group or your church or your D group. We're going to meet somewhere. And they encourage you to meet somewhere you know, in a basement or somewhere where you're meeting almost as if you're meeting in secret to bring awareness to all the people over the world who have to meet in secret for fear of their faith. Now, I want you to, to lie. In. If somebody beside you is distracting you, we can't make them listen, but they can't keep you from listening. I want to make sure that you follow the stories of a couple of guys. I had to write their names down because I wanted to make sure I, I told these stories as faithfully as possible. And so David Platt taught for six hours from the book of Jonah, and it was, it was great. Um, I didn't watch it live. I, I paid for it, and then I went back and I watched it over the last three days, uh, hours at a time. And I was so blessed by the teaching on Jonah. But in between the teachings of Jonah, there was, uh, there was a guy um, whose name is Stephen Morales. This is Stephen Morales. And Stephen goes and makes documentary short films. And here he is standing overlooking the city of Tehran in Iran. And he said um, the one reason he went there is because of the Christian persecution in Iran. And he put together a documentary called Hard to Reach Iran. So in between every segment of the teaching on Jonah, there was a, 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 about a 10-minute short film. There was at least three of these, maybe four, that Stephen Morales did where he went into Iran and he said, I, wanted, I want you to know what it's like to be a Christian in Iran. And I was very tempted to skip over these because I thought, I really just want to get to the teaching part. I love the book of Jonah. I just want to take more notes. And, and, but I thought, you know what? I, I, I need to watch this. I, I, I need to be faithful to this. And I, so I sat and I watched it. I watched it at first. I set it to like watching, you know, double speed because I just wanted to get through it, but I wanted to see it. And after the first story, I thought, no, no, I went back and I watched it in regular speed because I thought I, I need to hear this. He talked about the following countries. These, he compared North Korea, which is the number one most persecuted place to be a Christian in the entire world, which is no surprise to anybody. Iran comes in at number eight, and then he put Cuba at number 27. John Magnuson is right now taking DBS bookmarks into Cuba where this guy said, if you, you know, get caught in Cuba kind of speaking the truth of the Word of God, you can get arrested or your family can get put in jail. And, um, and so we want to be praying for John, who I've, I'm told is fine and doing great, and is uh, sharing DBS bookmarks in the 27th um, worst place in the world to talk about the gospel of Jesus. Here's the Middle East, and these countries, red being severe, and then various shades of red are how, how difficult it is to speak about Jesus. Now, you're, you're here on a Wednesday night. You drove here. Maybe you feel like your parents made you come here. But these are all people that you cannot meet in public and proclaim your faith. Otherwise, bad things are going to happen. Now, he said the government will tell you that in Iran, 99% of people are Muslim. 
which didn't surprise me, but he said that number is not accurate. He said, in reality, when you take a, a scientific sample and talk to people, the government will tell you that 99% are Muslim because Islam is the only religion allowed in the nation of Iran. But he said that number is actually closer to 49%. I was completely astounded. And he said most people, because of what they see from watching movies on Netflix or watching TV, anytime you see Iran, uh, you know, they're the, they're, it's, it's the big bad you know, big, big bad guys, and we feel like they are, you know, a number one enemy. Then I became clear why they were putting this in the story of Jonah, because Jonah was told to go to Nineveh, which was uh, Syria, which is modern day Iraq, right next to Iran. And he said, imagine if you were told to go and take the word of God to Iran. This is why Jonah said, no way, those people are not going to listen, and I want no part of it. And even if they did listen, I don't want to be there when you forgive them, because they've been so ruthless to us, they've got to get what's coming to them. So Morales goes on and talking about these nations, and he sits down with, uh, with this guy. His name is Nima. Nima mentions this guy here um, walked away from his job so that he could train church leaders and he translates the Bible into Farsi. And he said many times, if we were caught having this conversation, um, you know, we, we'd be in trouble. He told story upon story upon story about trying to get the Bible put into the hands of people in, in their language. There was a, a woman recently that did not uh, wear um, her uh, hijab the, pro the, the correct way. And she was kind of making a statement. She was taking and, and uh, beaten. And then this is a, a clip that he showed from, from the news. That during these protests that the, the young, younger people had uh, about this moment, 522 were killed during the protest. 70 minors were among those who died. And 20,000 arrests have been made because people just said, we are not going to be oppressed in this way by this Islamic uh, Republic. When he was there, he said, I was, the entire time I made this documentary, I was cut off from the entire world because no internet was allowed. There was no way for me to communicate with anybody in the outside world while I was in Iran. But I noticed that some of my friends were on Instagram and they were uh, on other social media platforms. And he asked them, how do you do that? And they said, well, because we either get satellite phones or we have VPN services or we have SIM cards that we take and smuggle from other countries and we are able to, to get word out. And he says, most of the internet traffic in Iran comes from all of these other places. These charts may not mean anything to you, but it just kind of sets the stage for the type of persecution. So imagine you're in a country where you're not allowed to get on the internet. You're not allowed to talk about Jesus. You're not allowed to gather together and worship Jesus. This kind of gathering would be completely forbidden. Uh, this man here, his name is Rampin Sudman. He was the son of the first Christian martyr who was killed by the government for being a Christian after the Islamic Revolution in the 70s. The first guy who spoke up and said, Jesus is the Messiah. And they said, we're going to make a, an example of you. And they killed him. And so what did he do? Um, now he goes around the country. He had to flee Iran, but he goes around the country trying to find ways to get and smuggle Bibles into Iran. I'm sitting there at my, at my kitchen table captivated uh, by this. And then this guy here, his name is Iman. They didn't give a last name because they said it would be too dangerous. They found out he was a Christian because he found a Bible that had been left on a bus because they can't just go passing out Bibles, but somebody left a Bible on a bus and he found it and he began to read it and he began to go to other people who he thought were going to be um, uh, friendly to, to talking about it. And they found out um, he spent 28 days in jail. They came into his house, stole his computer, all of his books, all of his notes, took his family. And he said, I found that Bible and I passed it to one friend, then another friend, then another friend. And he said, 200 people are now Christians because somebody left a Bible for me on a bus. And he said, we go into parties or gatherings and we pray, God, we're about to walk into this party. Guide us to someone who will be receptive to our message because if we ask the wrong person, they'll call the police and they'll take us and we'll be beaten. This is today. This isn't you know, uh, years ago, hundreds of years ago, or even 10 years ago. He said, uh, is, uh, the, the Muslims are not allowed to touch a Christian. If you touch a Christian, you're considered um, unclean. And he said, I found this Bible. I read this Bible. And he said, one day I heard... He said, I, he's talking to uh, Stephen. He said, I heard a voice almost, he goes, it did it made me turn around because I thought it was behind me. A voice that said, Iman, follow me. I want to change your life. And he said, I read that book and I passed it to all of my friends. This guy here, his name is uh, Milad. Milad is a guy who was cast out by his family for becoming a Christian. 
Milad is a guy who said, my uncle told me, don't come to my house anymore. I love you. But when you come to my house, every time you come to my house, they come and they ask me questions and they shut down my business and they make excuses to close my business under you know, all kinds of false reasons. Um, and he began to tell these stories. So I sat and I watched all of this happen and I thought, man, can you imagine? They talked about a secret church. They said, we meet in secret. There's, he said, there's about 20 of us that meet here and about 15 that meet there and about 30 that meet there. And he said, and we all split up because one person found a Bible on a bus and said, you go there and find people. You go there, you go there. And he said, let's all find somebody else. And they hand write out parts of the Bible because they only had one copy of the Bible. He said, at your church, you have greeters that stand at the door and greeters that come up here and give out gift cards. He said, we have people that stand at every door and at every window to look and make sure that nobody is coming in to arrest us. And so people are spotters at every window for every worship service. And I'm sitting there watching this going, I, I can't even begin to imagine. He didn't show this picture, but he shared this principle. This picture came into my feed through some other way. You can barely see the bottom of this picture. It's a grain of rice, and it's illustrating exponential growth. If that grain of rice, you, you add one to it, and now you've got two grains of rice. And if each of those two go and each go and then get one, then you know that you're going to have four grains of rice. And if those four then all go and get one, then you're going to have eight. And he said, just watch this picture. In just three or four squares later, just look what happens. This is a very simple way to illustrate what we're doing here, except the problem is, is that we reached a point where there's 140 grains of rice, and then we stopped. And these guys in Iran say, I can't imagine what it would be like to be able to freely meet and worship God. But when Iman heard God say to him, I need you to follow me, I'm going to change your life, and I have something I want you to do that's going to be scary... He said, I'll do it, and I'm going to follow you. Um, so we've mentioned all of these ways that God speaks to us through his word and creation. He speaks through other people, circumstances, angels, dreams, visions, impressions, that inner voice. We said that even if you've not been spoken to, the cross says you have been spoken for. We just sang it. The, the cross has spoken. You've been spoken for. I love what Blake shared last week when he said, not only have you been spoken for, but you're going to be, you guys wrote it down, or some of you I saw write it down. Not only have you been spoken for, but you can be spoken through. That you can be spoken through. So the question is, what do we do with this series now that we reach a point where we say, okay, we're at the end, you kind of told us how God speaks, what, so what, what's the point? Well, I want to direct you to this passage from the Second Timothy, Paul writes to somebody younger and he says, reflect on what I'm saying for the Lord is going to give you insight into all of this. I just show you this verse to say, this verse means that the Bible is not the only way he speaks. If he says, read all these words and God's going to give you insight, I don't think it means God's going to go, hey, check out this verse and this verse and this verse. God's going to give you insight into all of this. Now, here's where I'm going to need some help as we begin to, 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 to show this. Um, from Hebrews chapter 11, a verse that many of you may be familiar with. I'm just going to refresh your mind really quickly because we've got to go fast. By faith, who's the story about? Thank you, Abraham. When called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, he obeyed and he went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country, for he was, say the next few words, thank you, looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. Now you go, okay, there's a lot of stuff there. Here's all I want you to do. I want you to look at these words. By faith, when called to, he, even though, for he was looking forward to. You got them? I think the next slide may, um, okay, I want to go back to this one. I just want you to focus on those words for just a second. This isn't a Bible quiz, not a Bible test, but Abraham is given a call to go to a place that he's going to later receive as an inheritance, and he goes, he obeys, even though he has no idea where he's going. But he goes there because he was looking forward to a city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. Very simple outline. For every student in the room, especially if you're a believer and follower of Jesus, if you're not, this is still a big, big for you. And you should still pay attention. It'll make sense one day. But here's what I'm going to need. And I don't want to offend you if I don't pick you because I can't get everybody. 
but I really need a couple of folks that are literally maybe leaders in our group. I need a couple of people that are willing to, uh, to, to, to help me out with this. And I'm going to need, we're going to walk you through it. I'll tell you, I'll, I'll guide you through this, but I need somebody that is going through something that is, that is significant. Okay. All right. And so, um, let's, uh, we'll, Chandler, you want to come on up? All right. Come on up, Chandler. You'll go stand up there. And then I want to get somebody. I need to get, um, is there, is there, I know there's several of you that have, uh, okay, Ashley, come on up. And just stay here. Just sit here. That'll be, make, it, make it more comfortable for you guys. You sit here. I did not plan this. I did not pick them. I, did, I mean, I just picked them now. I didn't pick them ahead of time. I didn't ask them to be prepared for this. If I didn't pick you, it does in no way mean that I don't think what you're going through is as bad or big or important as what they're going through. I could just only pick two. If I didn't pick you, I still want you to participate. If you got it, say got it. This is important. And whether you, this is your first time in the room and you've never been to church, you could still kind of walk through this or you could just listen to two followers of Jesus do that. So what I'm going to do is take out all the other words. Now we're going to play a fill in the blank game. And I'm going to ask you to be vulnerable and open and honest, but I'm not going to ask you to feel like you've got to divulge things that, that are, you know, deeply private. I don't, and at, at any point, if I push too far, you just say, you know, I'm not going to ask, answer that because I'm not trying to do that at all. But I just want to show you that this is an exercise that everybody in the room can go through. So we're going to start with Chandler, okay? Now, Chandler, we're going to figure out what goes in this first blank here. What do you think goes in this first blank? The questions are going to get tougher. This is an easy one. I'll just tell you that. Okay. What do you think goes right in there? Do you remember what went in there in Hebrews 11? I'll remind you. I'll remind you. Let's go back and look. Okay, all right. Now, this isn't a test of that verse. Oh, it's not. Yeah, now this is the, whatever it is you all are going through. So maybe the Hebrews 11, I probably should have not have left Hebrews 11 there. So in the, in the story of you and Ashley and the story of these folks, what goes in that blank? Chandler. Very good. Okay, I, I, I goofed up by leaving Hebrews 11. Uh, by faith, Chandler. So everybody knows what goes in the first blank. Your name goes in there. All right, Chandler. By faith, when called to... Now, what do you think, don't give me a specific thing right here yet, we're going to go to it, but what do you think in general is going to go in that blank? You understand that question? Yes. Okay, what in general is going to go in there? What God has called you to do. Okay, good. Something that God is calling you to do right now, okay? Not just something, but something big, bigger than maybe, you know, normal. Okay, so by faith, Chandler, when called to fill in that blank, again, we've not rehearsed this, I have no idea what they're going to say, tell us. To disciple. When called to disciple, now you have to mention a name, but are we talking about a specific person or a specific group? Uh, a specific group. Okay, a specific group. Okay, so we're not going to say who, but by faith, Chandler, when called to disciple a specific group of people, he or she, in this case he, when by faith, Chandler, when called to disciple a specific group of people, he, now you haven't done this yet maybe, but you're going to put in here the action that you want, the answer you want to be in there. Okay? Maybe, because you don't know what answer goes in there yet, because maybe it's not, it's not there. The moment's not there. Ashley's getting ahead of all this. She's getting, you know, it's going to be easier for her to do this. So what would you put there? By faith, Chandler, when called to disciple this certain challenging group of people, what do you want to go there? Risk friendships. Okay. He, he risked. Okay. Well, I, good. Save that. I, I, I want, uh, this, is, this is me, this is, you're doing great, because that's, that's great. He, he discipled them. He obeyed. Okay? I want the action to, to go there, because, look here, even though, now what do you put? He could risk his friendships. Listen carefully, guys. Even though he could risk friendships, even though he knows he might risk some friendships, he's going to disciple, and then look at this one, because he was looking forward to I'm looking forward to them following God. I, I was wrong in giving, not giving you guys a microphone. I might apologize to the guys in the back. I'm just hold on to this. Again, I don't want, it's going to be private, but I want you to pass that back and forth. By faith, let's go through it again. By faith, Chandler, when called to disciple a group of people, he obeyed, even though he could risk his friendships because he was looking forward to them following God. Them following God. It was very, pretty easy to fill in those blanks. Okay. If you got so far what the, the task is, the assignment, say, I got it. 
Now, you're all, how many of you are all, don't, I'm not going to call on you, but how many of you are already beginning to fill in your own blanks? You're like, okay, I think I know my name, so you got that one. I think I know what God is calling me to, to something that is scary, that is big, and you may not even want to say what it is because you're so afraid, even though, and then that's the thing that you feel like, this is why I'm afraid. I want to do that thing in that third blank, but I'm afraid of that thing in the fourth blank because I'm looking forward to something that is bigger than the thing in the third blank. That's confusing, but if you got it, say got it. All right, Ashley, we're going to walk our way back through this, and we're going to try it again, and we're going to start at the very beginning. This should be easier for you, and then we're going to keep going fast, guys. We've got a few minutes, 10 minutes left. Here we go. By faith. Ashley. Good. You did much better at that than Chandler did. But to be fair, you saw him kind of walk through it, and, and that was my mistake. I'm just picking on you, Chandler. By faith, Ashley, when called to, give us a, a thing that you're called to do. Encourage or help. Okay, to encourage or help others. Uh, don't, don't give specifics, but are you thinking of a specific situation? Yes. Okay. Uh, is it a person? Yeah. Okay. By faith, Ashley, when called to encourage a specific person, she, what do you think is going to go in there? Obeyed. She obeyed. She encouraged. She stepped out of her comfort, however you want to word it, but you're going to do the thing that you were called to do in the second blank. Now look carefully, guys. Watch carefully. Even though, even though, answer the even though for us, Ashley. It's out of my comfort zone. It is so out of your comfort zone to do that because you might risk friendships, because you might get made fun of, because you might not get invited to the next party, because you might have somebody say no thanks and turn their back on you. There's lots of even those. Now listen, listen. For some of you, that fourth blank there are some even those in this room that are so ginormously scary. And you know what they are. You, maybe you've written them down. Because she was looking forward to what? The possible outcome it could have. Okay, I'm looking forward to the possible outcome of this person maybe turning something around or feeling the hope to go on. I'm not feeding you words. I'm just kind of saying these are other ways of saying what I think you're trying to say. Does everybody understand what they've just done? They've walked through this, this really difficult test. Now, whether you're a seventh grader or an eighth grader or whether you just became a grandfather, everybody in this room is able to walk through and say, I know what goes in the first blank. If you don't know that, then we, we, gotta, we, you know, we got some work to do. But what are you being called to do? What are you going to do? Even though, boy, that, that blank is just really, that, that thing is just ugly. It just sits there and it snarls at you and it wags its finger at you and it makes fun of you and it throws threats to you. But guys, until your, until your fifth blank is bigger than the fourth blank, you're going to sit right where you are and you're not going to do anything. Even though. So I need you to figure out what your even though is and say, God, just write that word, write that phrase, write that blank down and just, just hold that up and say, God, what am I going to do with the even though? And then write down what it is you're looking forward to. Now, I'm going to go really fast through this. You guys can, um, I'd, I'd love for people to still keep thinking about your courage, but I want to let you go and have a seat so you're not uncomfortable sitting up here. So go have a seat. Let's give them a hand, though, for their courage. I appreciate that. All right. Now, I want to, I want to show you, I want to show you this again. Chandler goes and he talks to these disciples, this group of people. Ashley goes and encourages one person. That person then goes and encourages somebody. She goes and encourages somebody else. Chandler disciples one. They disciple somebody else. Those two disciple somebody else. And then pretty soon you got this going on. And then pretty soon this room doesn't have enough space to hold all the people that want to come here because they're just like, I'm so encouraged by being with other people who are trying to muddle their way through life like I am. And I don't have to do it in secret. I don't ever have to be afraid that somebody's going to come in here and arrest me and say, you can't say that. They said, when we worship, we love to worship, but we have to sing like this and they have to sing quietly. And so guys, tonight, I just realized I didn't change the, um, uh, on the PowerPoint slide. I messed up a little bit. So we're going to go through these in order, but I've messed up on those, on, the, on these at the bottom. 
I'm going to ask you a series of questions to close this series out, and we've got to go very quickly. So if you're taking notes, you can write them down. Here's the first question. The first question is, are you expecting God to speak? Ignore these other questions. We'll get to them in a second. Are you expecting God to speak? Okay. You say, what do you mean? I mean, we got to get there first. Some of you show up here because your friends are here, your boyfriend's here, your girlfriend's here, the person you like to date is here, the person you like to be around is here, your, 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 your parents, you know, you try to get away from somebody. You're just kind of hanging out here and you're not expecting God to speak. You're expecting to get Chick-fil-A. You're expecting to play a funny game. You're ex- expecting to maybe watch a funny video to find out what the latest gossip is. You're expecting to see that person or you're expecting to be encouraged or maybe you're expecting to lift somebody up. It may have a good motive, but you're not expecting God to speak. You're just expecting all of your friends to speak to you or you're expecting somebody up here to speak. You're not expecting God to speak. So my first question is, am I seriously really expecting God to speak? All right, if you got it, say got it. Next one. I'm going to come back to that one in just a second because I want to do this first. I want to ask the question, and I'm going to ask the question of, um, Colin, can I ask you a question? Sure. Okay. Colin, um, I want to know, um, have you done what Blake has asked you to do? Did you do what Blake asked you to do? Do what? Uh, it's clear. It's totally clear. Why don't you know? And, it, and by the way, it's not difficult. This, my question is simple. Have you done what Blake asked you to do? Okay. Well, it's totally clear. It's totally easy. And I'm not sure why you haven't done it. So what I need you to do is I need you to go into the 10th grade classroom. Would you just walk into the 10th grade? I'm not sending. You're not being punished. This isn't time out. But I need you to go quickly because we have a few minutes remaining. Just go in that room, please. All right, he's going to go there. The first question, are you expecting, are you expecting God to speak? Now, um, we're just going to, we're sending Chandler, uh, Chandler, we're sending Colin into another room, uh, and he's left. He's gone and he's closed the door. And there he goes. And let's find out if Colin emerges from that room, and let's see what happens. Oh, I saw movement in the room. And I think I see movement coming out of the room. He's walking out of the room. And now let's see and find out what's going to happen. I asked Colin a question. His answer was no. Okay. Okay. And um, so now, have you done what Blake asked you to do? Was it difficult? All right. Uh, was it pretty simple to, to fulfill? Was it hard to understand? Okay. Then why had you not done it when I asked you the first time? Because I didn't know about it. Because you what? Didn't know about it. You didn't know about it. Why didn't you know about it? Because I wasn't listening to Blake. Because you weren't listening to Blake. Why weren't you listening to Blake? Because he's not in the room. Do what? Because he's not in this room. Because he's not in this room. Uh, the fact is he was in that room. And he was saying the sentence, which was what? Give this Bible to Knox. Give this Bible to and he was saying it over and over, even while I was asking the question. You couldn't say he hadn't asked me yet. He never asked me to do anything yet. He was asking you. He was just asking you in there. You went in there. You're like, oh, take this Bible. You brought the Bible, brought it straight to Knox and said, there it is. Here's the second question, guys. we got just a few minutes to wrap these questions up, and they're big. Are you placing yourself where you can hear God speak? The reason you said, I didn't hear God speak, is very simple why you didn't hear Blake speak. Because you were nowhere near where Blake was speaking. But the minute you did, you knew exactly what to do. And it wasn't difficult. And you did it easily. And it was to take the Word of God to Knox. Can I just tell you that God is somewhere right now in another room away from you that is from some of us and is asking you to take the word of God to somebody, but the reason you're not doing it is not because you're stubborn, not because you don't like the person, not because they're your enemy, but because you are not placing yourself where you even hear God saying it. And most of you, if you really heard God say it, you would go and do it. That's the second question. I got to go super fast. Are you preparing yourself to know what it sounds like when God speaks? The answer to that question for Colin is yes. 
because he's, he's here at True North. He's here on Sunday mornings. He's here at Senior Devo. He's there going on many of our trips. He's participating in D groups. He's showing up and saying, I'm learning all these places where God is speaking so that when God speaks, I'll know oh, that's God. Just like if certain adults in the back of the room stood up and said things, you might not know some of these adults because you've never met them. But if Bob Chapman stood up and said something to you, you'd say, that's Bob. Because you have placed yourself often where Bob speaks, right? If you got it so far, say, I got it. Okay, now let's look at the fourth question. Are you aware of all the distractions in your life that might keep you from hearing God speak? Because of time, I don't have time to work through those tonight. You know the answers to those, and I don't have to go through those. But are you even aware of all the distractions? And I think there's two last questions. And these are the big ones. What are you doing to manage or better eliminate those distractions? See, in Colin's sake, it wasn't that somebody was being so loud that he couldn't hear Blake. That could be one of them. But in his case, he just simply wasn't anywhere near where Blake was clearly given the instruction. And you say, but Skid, I come to True North, and I'm here in the room. You saying I should go in there for True North? No, that's not the point. You're saying I'm here in the room, and I don't hear God speaking. It's because you got too many distractions. There's too many temptations, too much stuff going on, and you have to slowly begin to eliminate those. I think there's two more questions, and our time is out. So would you look at this one? Is there any time of day, number six, is there any time of day when God gets your uninvited attention? For, the, for most of us, the answer to that is probably mm, not, no, no. And if the answer to number six is no, then don't be surprised. Don't be surprised when somebody says to you, have you done what God asked you? You're like, I don't even know what he's asking me to do. I got no idea. Because there's not a time when you're separating yourself from the world and going to where it's just you and God. You, you guys follow? And say, God, tell me what you need me to do. But then when you go in there and Blake told you to take that Bible, you had a choice. What was your choice? To take the Bible or not take the Bible. Let's make it even simpler. Your choice was to say yes or no. So I want you to take that piece of paper that you've been holding out. And I just want you to hold it up here. And I want you to keep this. Well, you don't have to keep it. You know what you could do? You could wad it up and you could throw it away and leave it here on the floor. You could. You could put it in your Bible. You could put it, you could put it on the dashboard of your car. You could put it in your locker. You could put it on the bathroom mirror. You could put it under your pillow. You could put it somewhere where you're going to see it. And here's my last question, guys, as we get ready to wrap up this series. Sydney's going to tie this series with a great testimony next week. But I just want you to just, would you just hold this up? Just hold this up so you can see it. And here's my question. What will you do with your yes? So listen carefully because it's time to go. Would you just listen for a second? God has put within every single one of you the ability to do whatever it is he's asked you to do. You can't say, well, mine, you, you made me say yes. You gave me a yes. If God has called you to do something, he has equipped you to do it. Now, it may be difficult. Ask Abraham. But Abraham went, even though he didn't know where he was going because he looked forward to something bigger. So my question is, what are you going to do with your yes? Because all of you, when Chandler set up here and Ashley set up here, all of you filled in those blanks. At least those of you that are serious about trying to figure life out, all of you thought through that. And at the end of that, it's the question, Chandler, are you going to disciple those people that could risk some relationships? And Chandler says, God, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to use this. I'm going to do it. Ashley, God says, I want you to encourage this person that's going to step way outside of your comfort zone. And they may say, Ashley, who do you think you are to try to give me that kind of advice? And then God says, Ashley, what are you going to do with this? So whoever you are, what are you going to do with your yes? You can take this and throw it away. Or you can put it somewhere and say, God, I'm just going to put this right here. I'm not ready to do that thing yet. I can't do it yet, but I'm going to put it right here, and I'm just going to pray. And God, you, you help give me the strength, and I'm going, to, I'm going to cash this in. Sure, there are things you don't need to say yes to in life, and sure, there are some things that you need to say no to in life. But to this thing that God is calling you to, he is saying, 
Don't be afraid. If he's spoken to you through creation, through his word, through other people, through dreams, through visions, through an inner voice, through an impression, God says, I have given you the yes. Just what are you going to do with it? But you've got to find a spot where you'll go in a room where it's just me and you talking. Otherwise, you'll never hear it. I hope that makes sense, guys. And I want to thank you so much for the way you've honored uh, so much of this series. And for, if it's not made sense to you, maybe one day it will. The Lord will give you insight into all of this. Let's pray. God, thank you for tonight. And I thank you for these students, for the adults, for these students' parents, their siblings. And God, I specifically want to pray tonight for all of the people that are on the other side of the yeses that are in the hands of these students. There are a lot of yeses that if the yes really materialized, this room wouldn't be big enough for the people that wanted to gather every week, not in secret, but to loudly proclaim that you are the God of hope. And it's through that God we pray and we say together. Amen. God bless you guys. Eighth grade guys, really fast. Eighth grade guys, run into the 10th grade classroom. Everybody else have a great night. See y'all. Love you guys. Be good.